I live over in that direction, so I change my route home depending on what I'd like to pass any given day. At the moment, I take quite a long route home because I have to pass every magnolia in Beeston just to check how they're doing, you know. What we're looking at here is a primrose, a common native British plant. This is almost certainly a garden variety. And I've brought this primrose here because, brought you to this primrose, I mean, I didn't plant it, to illustrate one of the problems that plants have. You see, flowering plants have rather complex sexual systems because every flower, if it's a perfect flower, as we call them, contains male and female parts. And monoecious plants, those that have both male and female parts, have a difficulty because they want to try and breed with other individuals to move their genes around and they don't want to contaminate their own flowers with their own pollen and so they, they avoid inbreeding. Dioecious plants are plants with imperfect flowers where the flowers are either male or female and we'll meet some cases of those later. But for now I just want to illustrate an interesting feature of primroses which shows one way in which plants can avoid trying to be pollinated by their own type. And that's a simple difference between two types of primrose flower, which are called pin and thrum. Now, if we just take this one flower here and pull it apart gently, up oh, there goes the pollen. You'll notice in this flower, the stigma here sticks out a long way above the anthers. So the female part is way above the male parts. But it's not always that way. This is what's called a pin-type flower. And if we look around, we should be able to find some examples where this is reversed. Now this is where it gets interesting. Ah, you might need to help here. That's pin. And we have, hurrah, we have a thrum. Oh, are we, are we, are we? Oh, they're all full of water. Oh, weird. Oh, perfect, that's a great one. Absolutely spot on. So now contrast this flower here I'll just open it out a little bit better. Exactly the same species, but you can see in this case, the male parts are way up here, the anthers, and the female parts are way down here. So much lower. What we have here are the two different types of flower. Here you have the pin form, where you can see the male parts are down here, and the female parts are sticking up. And here you have the thrum form. The female parts are lower down and the male parts are on top. Any individual plant will only have one type of flower. And this prevents inbreeding because a bee or whatever it is that's coming to pollinate the flower will come to this one plant and it'll get pollen on one part of its body. And then when it visits the next plant, it will deposit its pollen on the stigma of the other plant and pick up pollen from elsewhere. So there will be two different patches where the bee will collect pollen on its body and so it's much like having two different sexes except here it's just where the pollen happens to stick on the insect. And so they won't get self-pollinated because a pin will only be able to get pollen from a thrum and vice versa. If you look at that central spike there, it is basically a pine cone stuck in the heart of a flower with multiple sections, each of which will produce a single seed. And if you see a magnolia after it's flowered, when it comes into fruit, what you find is something that looks remarkably like this cone. 